It's Mailbag, courtesy of BuyingAndSellingLA.com, making real estate simple for buyers and sellers. This one comes from Garth. Garth wants to know, I just received a counteroffer. The seller is asking me to reduce my inspection time from 17 days down to 10. My agent says it's normal for the seller to ask for this, uh, supposedly to get a faster commitment from me. How much of a deal breaker is this going to be? It could be it could be the deal breaker. You know, timelines are important. Seven days is going to break a deal. <clears throat> yeah, well, Good. because if someone else is willing to go down to ten, or maybe yep. s- step up and say, "Hey, we can do it in seven because we know we can get our." Hey, I can do that. Yeah, I can do that contingency in seven, seven days. <laughs> yeah. Six minutes. Oh, I can do that contingency in six days. Exactly. Do that contingency. You know, and, and of course, you want to make sure that your inspection contingency is exactly that for your physical inspections, not your other inspections, your appraisals and things that you want to remain. But as far as getting your professional home inspector going in there, going to the city and finding out if that patio in the back is really legitimate with permit and things like that, it it shouldn't take you more than really seven to 10 days. So that's pretty normal. It's pretty normal. That's usually one of the first things, once you get the verbal that your offer got accepted, usually the realtor is immediately on the phone. When are you free for the inspection? Didn't didn't they make it seventeen days for a reason? Isn't that well, kind of like a safe amount other of time? Items. Okay. But I mean, if, if Frank says, and I know that first of all, I know that not all real estate agents follow through with all the things you just said. Yeah. But going down to the city, getting information from a city or a government entity takes time. Long Beach takes time. It ta- you know, so well, I mean, right. can you realistically do all of the due diligence that a an actual real estate agent or a realtor you can you can should do you can do it in in a couple of hours with most cities. Uh, some cities provide online uh, yeah. permit and disclosure. Um, but, you know, if you go to, let's say, for example, L.A. City, and mm-hmm. you have to take your number, you could be there just as long as you would the DMV. But you're buying a house. Take the time, a few hours. You're going to get everything uh, right in front Who, of you. Who's permit. taking the time, the real estate agent or the <clears throat> or the buyer? Well, you know, the brokers never like their agents to go and do the due diligence for the buyer. So it's really got to why be... Would they, why would they not want the agent to do the because due diligence? Because now you're... They're pro- the professional. Because that's a liability. But, but now you're... Okay, the, something. Like a buyer, like a bu- like Fred and Ethel are going to know what oh, to do? Oh, you'd be surprised. Buyers will will put the, the finger and point the finger at yeah. whoever when, it, when it, things go wrong. Let's say you are the agent and you go down to the city for the buyer and you give them 20 pages of permits and, and construction permits, but there were 21 and you just happen to miss that one and that yeah. that missed document could be key. What's the buyer going to say? Well, this is what they gave me and they did, they forgot to give me that one. Realtors you know, so. have been sued in some cases that, wow, I'll see them like, man, how on earth is a realtor supposed to know that or even yeah. identify that? And, they, and they've lost their cases and they've had to pay out. They've lost licenses and they had to pay out money. They are, they are the, the uh, chosen professional. You're, you, you are the local expert. You are putting yourself in front yeah. of the buyers and sellers as um, a responsible well, party who's well, educated in the... Well, you always want to uh, mm-hmm. hope that that buyer understands that you're there to consult them or maybe advise them or give them your opinion on markets Mm -hmm. but not conditions of properties you're not a contractor you're not you know you didn't build the property you're not a city planner isn't this kind of along the lines of what we've talked about before dropping your pants i mean isn't this just buyer desperation i want that house so bad and i know that there's four other people that want it so i'm just going to drop my pants a lot right now if i don't get my contingencies done that's okay i'll take my chances i'll roll the dice well, well, you're only taking the chance if you, let's say you did go down to the city and mm-hmm. you don't see a permit for that patio in the back. You should just assume it's it's an illegal patio and assume that by you buying it, you're responsible for it. If the city were to come down and find it, if the neighbor were to complain about it, now it's your problem. Okay, so keeping you it know. simple for Garth, you say drop drop your days from 17 to 10. I think it's reasonable and it's not uncommon to ask for 10 days instead of 17. You agree? It's, it's, yes, I you can do it. You can get what it done you, in that amount Dean? of time. Yeah, I, I mean, I think there's just a couple other things. To, if if he if he is prepared to deal with the consequences of those, you know, those inspections coming in, like Frank said, the, the patio not, not being great. So different buyers are going to have different levels of motivation and they're going to have different tolerances for risk. So for the most part, for the most part, it's probably okay. I mean, the, 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 the realistically, the the 
other side of that is an inspection comes in, something's not right, and then you're going to go back to the seller and negotiate, mm-hmm. and they're not really in a position where they have to negotiate with you. So it's kind of a situation where you either buy it as is or you just move out. Wow. Yeah, and that and that's where the agent, like as you said, their professional opinion should come into play. Now that the buyer knows it, the agent knows about that patio, now that agent, uh, or at least I would feel comfortable saying, hey, these are the consequences for that. This is my experience. This is what I've seen happen. You know, that kind of advice makes total sense. But you're not a planner. You don't know if that really is a legitimate or not a, a legitimate. So you should stay out of that. You know? And there's be a couple of lending so. things that you probably want to talk to your lender about when it okay. comes to unpermitted. Well, Garth, it looks like uh, at least you've got a majority here because I don't, I don't like dropping my pants for anybody, especially when it comes to buying what cause around here is going to be a five or six hundred thousand dollar house. So, uh, but my gang over here and they're the professionals. They say go ahead and drop it from seventeen to ten. All right, keeping it real estate, drop and up. find more at findmywayhome.com. <laughs>